Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining me for tonight's Drayton uh, live training, live on Facebook from our factory here in Plymouth, where we manufacture Drayton controls. And the control that we're going to be focusing on tonight is this, which is our new auto balancing TRV. Uh, but before I get into that, I just want to give you the opportunity, if you've got any questions as we go through, uh, stick them in the comments. And when I get to the end, I'll, uh, I'll go through them. There's a couple of comments came in off the back of the promo video yesterday. So we'll have a look at those at the end. Um, but yeah, this is a product that we've uh, only recently launched, only been out for probably uh, a few months now. Uh, but it's, it's a bit of a game changer in terms of uh, how you install and balance uh, a heating system. I'm sure you're all familiar with this body here, which is our standard EB body. Uh, and we are still selling this in a pack. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through, uh, I'll show you how you can balance on this because you probably already know, but you can balance a radiator system on this. But it's very much fixed balancing in so much as you fix a flow rate and that, or you, fi you, you fix an aperture size for the radiator. Um, but with the new one, it's dynamically balancing. So irrespective of changes to pressure or temperature in the system, uh, the, the the flow rate into that particular radiator will always be consistent. So really good product. What I'm going to do to start with is I just want to give you a bit of background on balancing. Uh, and I apologize if you uh, already know this stuff, but I just want to go through exactly what it is that we're trying to achieve when we're balancing a heating system. So here I've got a bit of a mock-up, which is just showing you a boiler and some radiators. Now, the important thing to say here is that every single radiator uh, on the system here it will be in a different location. Uh, it will have different lengths of pipe work between it. Um, and what that all really sums to is no two radiators have the same resistance to flow. So one is likely to be easier than the other for flow to go through. And that's what we really want to try and level out when we balance is making sure that there's no, there's no easy path um, back to the boiler for any particular radiator. So you can see here, we've just got the, the basic flow in return. We're not really concentrating on hot water at this stage. Uh, they're really just looking at the radiators. But here we've got the, the flow in return um, piped in. And what we really want is, like I say, you, you don't want any sort of path of least resistance for the water that's leaving the boiler to flow. Now, you often hear the term delta T uh, talked about when we're talking about balancing uh, radiator system. And I've had questions on this. And what but delta T is, it's the Greek letter delta, which just means change, and T is temperature. So change in temperature or the differential between the flow, so the, the water leaving the boiler, and the return. Now, don't particularly care what the flow temperature is. Uh, you really want it sort of uh, low enough. You, you, don't want it, you don't want it so high that the water coming back to the, the radiator is above dew point. Um, but you normally have a differential of around about 20 degrees. Now, it's not a hard and fast rule, and some boiler manufacturers stipulate what your, what your delta T should be. But typically, as a general rule, and what we've done sort of historically, is we've looked for a 20 degree drop between what's leaving the boiler and what's coming back. So if you've got 60, 60 degrees leaving the boiler, you would expect to see 40 degrees coming back. So that's what delta T means. And you'll see why that's important, because when we're setting up the auto balancing valve later, you need to pick what delta T you want between the, the flow and the return. Now, what we what we also try and do is we want to make sure that, like I say, there's no there's no path of least resistance for any particular on any particular radiator for the water to flow. So as the water leaves the boiler and it starts to enter the first radiator, if I just uh, move this along a little bit here so you can see the graphic. There we go. So as, as the water's leaving uh, the boiler and going through the radiator, we want to throttle down the first radiator. So we do get flow through it, but we don't want so much flow that it's that nothing goes on to the rest of the radiators in the system. So here's a system that's pretty well balanced. So we've got water leaving the boiler. As it tees off into the first radiator, radiator, we get some flow through the radiator so it can emit that heat. But the majority of the water carries on and is, is fulfilling the requirements for the rest of the radiators on the system. So that's really what we're trying to achieve. And there's a few ways that we can do that um, at the moment. If, you, if you've got just a standard fixed flow rate valve body, then you will throttle down the lock shield. Uh, so typically what you would have is the, boil, the, the radiator that's closest to the boiler in terms of pipe work. You'd have the, the lock shield throttled down uh, quite tight. So you'd have minimal flow going into that radiator. The ones furthest away, you would have uh, wide open. And obviously balancing 
starts becoming a bit more critical when you're trying to lift water to different stories. So you're going to have a pump on the system, but you know, as, as soon as you try and send water, you know, to, to higher floors, not only are you fighting the friction and the resistance to flow from the pipework, but you're then also fighting gravity. So typically what you find is in an unbalanced system, the radiator that's closest to the boiler gets red hot and you don't and you don't get any uh, flow or minimal flow to radiators that are furthest away on the system so it's going to be the radiators that in terms of pipe work from the boiler furthest away are going to be the ones that don't get hot and therefore the radiator can't uh, reach its uh, desired output and ultimately from, from the customer's point of view it results in cold rooms so this is a scenario now where we've got an unbalanced system. So again, same flow leaving the boiler, but here the valve on the on the first radiator is wide open. So we've we've now created a path whereby the water's got, got no uh, impetus to, to flow on through the system because it's now found a, 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 an easier way to go, which is through the first radiator. Now, like I say, this causes a couple of problems. Uh, firstly, the rest of the radiators on the system aren't able to fulfill their, their capacity, so you get cold rooms. But one of the worst things is you've now not got your delta T between the flow and return because the water that you've, you've essentially raised the, the return temperature to that of the flow because it's not going through the rest of the system. And really what that amounts to is it starts to it means that your return temperature is highly likely to be above dew point, which is 54 degrees, in which case your condensing boiler is no longer condensing. So you're, you are, you're killing the efficiency of the boiler because it, it can't run in condensing mode. So that's really why we, why we want to balance. We want to make sure that we, all the radiators on the system get fulfilled with the, the, the necessary amount of hot water that they need. But also we want to make sure that the return temperature doesn't get, doesn't rise above delta, the delta T of say 20, when it does, because obviously as the system is on and it's heating, when when the when rooms start to become satisfied and the valves start to throttle down, you won't be losing any heat through the emitters, through the radiators. So that is going to be coming back on the return. What's important then is we have our electronic controls kick in to turn the boiler off. So we never want to be at the stage where all the TRVs have shut down, but we're keeping the boiler on. Be, because you'll you'll it will it will then not be it'll be above dew point highly likely and uh, it won't be condensing. Your modern boilers will obviously detect this as well and they will modulate themselves down. So let's come back into the room. Let me ditch that and we'll have a look at the new auto balancing valve. So here's a side by side of the two. So this is the ODB body. This is in I say old, but it still it still is a current product. It's just that it's uh, it's the one where you set the balance on the, on the top. So you've got six positions uh, that you can. If I get the, get that into shot, so you've got six positions there, and what that re relates to is the aperture size. So you've got your you've got your drilling in the body there, and what you can do by turning this insert. You can you can reduce the size of the aperture there, so you've got six positions, and you can find the, the best position for um, for your radiators. But obviously, that's very much at whatever temperature that you're you happen to be balancing the system at. Now, the new auto balancing body, which is this one here, and you can see it's got this sort of like this chamber that you don't get on the other one. Now, this is, this is going to be dynamically balancing. So irrespective of whatever temperature or pressures there are in the system. So say, for instance, when, it, when the system's cold, um, be your, the, the flow into the radiator may be slightly different because with, with this one because, or indeed if, you, if you've balanced on the lock shield because the pressure in the system will be, will be different. Whereas with these, irrespective of pressure or temperature changes, you're always going to get a consistent flow into the radiator, and we do that by setting the uh, the flow rate on the top of the body. Now, the setting you set it to, I'll cover in a minute. But in terms of how we fit these, you can see that dimensionally, both of these, and I can get them in shot. Come on, I've been doing this long enough now to be able to get things in shot. Right, you can see dimensionally they are the same size. So if you've got EB bodies in, and this is particularly good if you're maybe specking for wiser where you're going to have to buy bulb bodies as separates anyway it's a really good idea to go for this one the uh the auto balancing body but if you are upgrading they are dimensionally the same so in terms of the port size so you don't have to move any pipe work if you want to go from the eb body to the new uh, auto balancing it's a really easy upgrade 
So you see the you see the increments on the top. Now, what those actually relate to? There's, there's 15 positions there, all the way from one through to 15. And what that is is liters per, per hour times 10. So if it's on 15, you're, that's 150 liters per hour that would be going into the radiator. Now, how do you know what you need? Well, there's two ways of finding that out. So on the box, you've got uh, on the inside of the box flap, you've got this, which tells you if you know what size your what the output of your radiator is. So this is particularly useful if you're fitting uh, new radiators. You know, you've bought new radiators because it will tell you what the output is. Based on what the output is and what delta T, so you can see there's three columns there. So you've got a delta T, you've got you've got three different delta T's, 10, 15, and 20. Remember, that's the differential between the flow and return. So depending on what delta T you want you, you pick, that then gives you the setting to set the top of the valve insert in. So say for instance, if we want to, to go to position three, firstly you can see it's in calibration mode. So that little indicator at the side there, that one that's off on its own, that's your calibration mark. And when you get them, they'll always be set to that. And then, but it, but if you want to change it, you can either use a, an 11 mil spanner on here, that, that hex is an 11 mil, or we've recently made a change to this, which you all know is our balancing key, or the old one that we had. Uh, you, you had your four positions, but on that end, didn't really have much we've now integrated a hex into that. So that will now fit the top of the auto balancing body. So you don't have to have an 11 mil spanner, which I appreciate is a bit of an odd size, but you're now able to turn that. It will turn infinitely. So you're not gonna tighten anything by turning it. You just turn it until you get the appropriate index mark or the appropriate setting against the index mark. That there is about 10 by the looks of it. So that would be, 100 liters per hour. So if I if, if my chart told me that I needed to set it to position 10, twist it around to 10, and that there is balanced. That's that radiator is going to be balanced, irrespective of whatever other changes there are on the system. So if you suddenly take a radiator away, or if you add another radiator to the system, you don't no longer have to go back through and balance all the system. You'll be familiar with these things here, these differential um, thermometer, where you you know you clamp one of these on the flow and one of these on with the return. And you're looking at that don't need any of that anymore you're not interested in what the difference across the radiator is all you want to know is what the flow rate into the radiator should be which you which you're told on the uh, it shows you on the box now next question is what happens if you if you're retrofitting these so maybe you're you're changing out eb bodies to the auto balancing version um, and you don't know what the radiator output is because it's in it's already in the uh, in the customer's house so what we've done is we've created this on our website so it's a little calculator where instead of knowing the output of the radiator you can put in the radiator size so we give you the option to put in the dimensions and then you can choose the type so radiators come in lots of different types and it, it pretty much the, the type discerns with a how many panels it's got so you can have double panel triple panel single panel and then you've got the convector fins on the back so some of them will be double panel single convector and obviously that depending on which ones you've got they'll be bigger but they will be hopefully sized for the room um so all we have to do on here is pop in the details again we choose what delta t we want whether we want 10 15 or 20 and then once we calculate it it then tells us what we need to set the body to in order to fulfill that uh, that flow rate for that particular uh, that particular radiator, so you can see really easy way of balancing. Balancing used to take me. I would on a good day, I would say if I could get on a you know sort of a, a medium sized three bedroom house, I'd probably be there maybe two and a half three hours going around tweaking lock shields, or even when you're using the EB body, because what you tend to find is even if you you know, you, you make the change, you then go downstream and make a change to the other radiator. It, 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 the first one's gone out of whack. So, you, you know, you're going back on yourself. You, you're waiting to see what the differential temperature changes. This, this really saves you a huge amount of time, even to the point whereby, it, you know, you, you could set these up the night before. You know, if you, if you, you, you can package the, the body uh, with the radiator that you're going to fit 
and you can you can you can preset as you can do all your calculations, set the vol body, and then you guys have just got to go in and fit them. There's no balancing to do at the end. Just use your commissioning journey for a boiler or a radiator system, and then leave. And you and the thing is, you can leave knowing that you've uh, your your the system is in balance. So and, and you know if I'm particularly honest, when I normally balance. It's sort of best guess. You know, you, you do your best with the differential uh, thermometers. Um, but, um, you know, even so, you, you, you and again, you're only balancing at, at that particular moment when the system is at, you know, whatever temperature. Whereas with these, they will respond to different pressure and temperature changes uh, through the system. So it's really good. Like I say, particularly good for Wiser. Wiser doesn't come with valve bodies as standard. So whilst you can retrofit them to a system again you know if it's a really old system it's it might well be worth changing out the valve bodies because you know what's the point in fitting a really smart control system to bodies that perhaps don't work well before we would have always steered you towards the eb body the one you know the the variable flow rate albeit that you fix it at a particular value uh, value but now you uh, you've got the auto balancing so it, it really does drive the efficiency and the, the, just to give you the stats it's about 8.8 percent .8 is what you can save by having a properly balanced system and obviously this now takes the guesswork out because you 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 know you don't need to uh, you don't need to be going through each individual radiator doing your de you're doing your, your your temperature change across each radiator you can set it based on the output Right, let me come back in the room. And I want to now just take you through the different SKUs. So um, this, the auto balancing valve body is going to be supplied with uh, the TRV4, so the, the range leader, and also the RT414. So those are the two head options that you can get. And these are all going to be for 15 mil uh, compression. So it's going to be angled and straight. So there's a straight version of the, uh, the body. Uh, and there's the angle one beside it. So those are those are the two body formats that you get. Now there's one thing just to point out. Remember the the EB body has got the double headed arrow. So in terms of when you're piping it up, this was always bidirectional. So it didn't matter which way round the flow was going. Whereas with these, uh, they've got the single headed arrow. Let me get that round the right way. You can see. So the flow has got to go up there, and it's got to divert. That way, so the new auto balancing valves are unidirectional. They're, they're no longer bidirectional like the EB, but it doesn't make a huge odds. It just means that on, sometimes you'll have the head in the vertical position, or if you need to, if you need to change it to accommodate the flow, you would just roll it through and you'd have it on the side. And that's a perfectly legitimate way of having your your sensing head. So, like I say, you've got 15 mil. It's, it's, it's only on compression. 15 mil angled and 15 mil straight we also do them in the packs with a lock shield so you're going to get the standard lock shield with these um and the way that you manage that is the lock shield would always remain wide open so the back you, you don't want to throttle it down in any way so you're, you're, you you get the adjuster cap in there as always but you're not going to use it other than to make sure that the body is, or the lock shield is uh, driven all the way wide open let me just have a quick check to see if there's any questions coming in. Don't think you see anything that's come in uh, while I've been live. So uh, I'll deal with the question that came in last night. Uh, the question is, do you need one of these on every single radiator? Well, the answer to that is yes, because obviously you, you, you want the system to be dynamic. You want every radiator to be able to manage and fix the flow into the rate or every every single volt to fix the flow into every single radiator irrespective of any other changes on the system so you do want one of these on uh, every radiator if you don't have it it's going to then start to impact on because you you've essentially got one radiator that you would need to manually balance so it's not the end of the world but it's you know if once you've drained down to fit these, it would make sense to fit these on every single radiator. If you happen to have a bypass, so if you happen to have one of these that's uncapped, um, that you know, that what what you would do with that, you'd still fit one of these bodies. If, but what you would do is you wouldn't put a head on it. You would just put a decorator's cap. Now you can get the the plastic decorator cap. 
comes as standard. So you would just pop that on and you would turn it down until it just touches the pin. You don't want to drive it all the way down. Otherwise, you'll knock the uh, you'll, you'll stop the flow completely. So you just you would just wind it down until uh, it just touches the pin. So you just feel it tighten on there. Uh, and again, you've got no thermostatic control on that. You're, that's going to be your radiator that's always open, but it's going to it's going to ha have the flow fixed based on the setting that you've made on the top of the uh, of, of the insert that you turn around. Uh, and you can also get to to make it look a little bit prettier. You can also get a chrome version of the decorator cap, so you don't have to use the plastic one, which is a true sort of decorator's cap which you would use to to wind down and, and throttle this off if you want to take the the radiator off the wall um so with the uh, with the chrome one it's it's more of a decorative cap that you would just screw on again same principle don't wind it all the way down otherwise it will throttle off the uh, the flow completely so that was one of the questions that came in uh overnight let's see if there's anything else uh I've pretty much covered all I need to do. I'll just show you the RT414. You know, you know that head and the TRV4, you can get it in that. So those are the two head options. The RT212, whilst it doesn't um, it doesn't come with the auto balancing body, uh, it will fit and it will control, so you can use that. And like I say, Wiser fits on there. Use the M30 by one and a half um adapter the only thing to mention on that is that there are no serrations on the top of the body um and and similarly with the wiser head we we've, we've, there's, there's been a change where you no longer get the hex up inside the the head anymore um there's been an engineering change so if you are using wiser with this you will need to just nip the locking ring down this bit here on the wiser head we always used to say before, stick it on finger tight. You'll know we'll, you will just need to nip that down with a, a pipe wrench or some water pump pliers just so that you can get the necessary torque when you're putting the wiser head onto the adapter. So that's the only change, but really good, really good way of saving time. Gives your customer peace of mind because obviously they they know irrespective of if there's any changes or you know even if they just take a radiator off the wall to do some decorating, the rest of the, the system will compensate because it's balancing all the time as opposed to us going in and balancing as a one-off these things are doing it all the way through the, the warm-up when the thing is when the system is up to temperature and also when uh you know when th when everything is up to temperature things start to throttle down and, uh, and and kick your boiler into modulating you know to start modulating because the return temperature starts to go up but then that's really where you want your uh, your controls then to kick in you know your electronic controls it's got the feedback to turn the boiler off right last opportunity for any questions not seeing anything coming in just whilst you might if you've if you've got any questions get them in now because otherwise i won't see them uh, just before i go just want to give you a little heads up on the nine degree network so if you're not members already get yourself joined up um remember it's sort of split into two sections you've got the priority shop now here you've got the uh the the valves you've got the uh you, you've got the new auto balancing valves there available at, at a good price you've also got valves as separate i didn't mention that but they actually come as separate so if you're fit again particularly good if you're fitting for wiser so you can get them with the 414 head the trv forehead or just as singles uh, and there's obviously all the rest of the stuff on the shop. There's wiser, there's the electrical heat switch, the new room floor sensor. Uh, if you're using the electrical heat switch with uh, underfloor heating, electric underfloor heating. So some good stuff to be had at some good prices on the priority shop. And uh, the other side of the nine degree network, the know-how section. This is where there are all the modules for all the different products. Now we're going to, we've got plans to add more products to this but we've got wiser you've got your standard trv where i sort of co i cover balancing uh you using the old way you, you know if you, if you fit the rt212 that's got the fixed flow rate body you're going to have to balance using the lock shield uh so i'll show you that and i also take you through how you do it with the eb body in more detail uh you've got modules in there on the new digistat um so the old digistat has now gone obsolete there still will be stock available uh, in the merchants but the the gen 2 digistat the one that had the wavy bottom that is now obsolete that's being superseded by the new digistat 
so if you haven't seen it yet or you just want a bit more advice on that, have a look at the modules in there. Uh, I pretty much cover everything there is to know about the new Digistat. And there is now an auto balancing module on there, which really is, it just covers in a bit more depth the sort of stuff that we've covered tonight. Right, I don't see any more questions. So thank you as always for joining me. Uh, I'm not sure when my next one is. I, I imagine in about a month's time. And I'm not entirely sure either what the subject's going to be, but do join me for that if you can. I'll give you the heads up. I'll give you a promo to say what it's going to be nearer the time. Uh, keep an eye out for the other stuff that we're doing on Facebook. There's going to be some more live streams. It won't be me, but it'll be far more interesting, I'm sure. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, in the meantime, have a good uh, rest of the week. And uh, thanks for joining me. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Catch you soon.